Hello beautiful growers, it's your girl Crystal Azoke on my plant channel, Growing with Crystal. And I'm so excited because this is my first video. If you're a stranger to me and what I do, get ready to subscribe as I will be your dedicated underpaid plant mentor. I, like many of you watching, get so tired of putting all this love and affection into a plant that's budding a new leaf, only for that new leaf to look this big. Like, I give and I give and I give and you give me this? I'm addicted to big foliage, okay? And I need that to be uh, constantly fed or I might just lose it all and throw all these plants outside of my patio. But if you just want to make your plant just do its thing and to do what it does naturally in the wild and just all over the place, then you probably wanna try staking your plant. I don't think you should just buy your own steak because the way I easily made these poles should be illegal, but it's not because it's super easy to do and you can do it too. And you're gonna watch how I did it and you're gonna try it and we're gonna be great. It's gonna be big juicy leaves everywhere and you can send me cuttings of your plants. Send me all the cuttings. I'm gonna share two of my personal favorite ways to make both a moss and cocoa core self-watering pole. And believe me when I say that cocoa core and sphagnum moss are not to be used interchangeably. I also was using this interchangeably before because I didn't realize that there was a difference, but there is, and we're gonna get into that. The difference between the cocoa fibrous poles versus the moss poles is moss is gonna be more porous, so your plant is gonna have an easier time attaching itself, rooting itself into the actual medium of the moss versus cocoa core. And also sphagnum moss does have micronutrients that your plant babies need for some TLC. However, after a couple of years of using a moss pole, the sphagnum moss will slowly break down as a lot of organic material does, but that's really not so much the issue. What the issue is when people use sphagnum moss over cocoa fibrous poles is you will get algae. Sphagnum moss is going to retain a lot more water and will stay damp for a longer period of time, which is perfect environments and breeding grounds for algae to form. Now, this is something I recently learned and I had no idea until I did my own research, but it is true and it hasn't happened to my beautiful moss poles yet, but that's because they're super new. I literally, they're probably less than like two months old at this point. So I don't expect to see this and I also don't keep my humidifier on the highest mode, although I know some plants would love it if I did that. I just know that that's gonna hurt a lot of electronics I have in my household. If you don't have well ventilation in your room, wherever your plants are growing, that's definitely gonna happen. So just keep that in mind. I don't think that should steer you away from moss poles at all. Just be mindful that the more wet a medium is and consistently is, the more likely things like fungal matter will form and grow and try and compete the nutrients that's already available for your plant to have. And we don't want that. Like, we don't want leeches up in here, okay? Which leads me to cocoa core poles. Unlike sphagnum moss, cocoa core does not do the same thing in retaining water. In fact, it's almost hydrophobic in some ways when comparing them side by side with its interaction of water. And as a result, it does degrade much slower than sphagnum moss does, which is awesome because then that also means there's probably not going to be algae growing on it even after a couple of years go by and you won't have to worry about it breaking down and getting soft and having to make a new one or buy a new one which can all be very costly and time consuming so because it's not as like spongy it's going to be a little more difficult for your plants little tendrils aerial roots to latch onto and oftentimes I find myself fighting with my monstera deliciosa so that I can direct it and affix itself onto the actual cocoa core but I don't think that's that big of an issue because I'm already doing that anyway Anyways, but it's something that you might want to consider, especially if you have a more juvenile plant that's not going to have those really hard and sturdy 
aerial roots to form itself and wrap itself around easily onto your poles. Now that we got the differences out of the way, let's start showing you how I made my first moss pole with whatever I had available because honestly I did not want to get no PVC pipes. So this is not going to include PVC pipes for those who might assume that that's the material you'll need. I literally use bamboo stakes and I already had them so I thought you know what I'm not making any use of them anyway so we just gonna go ahead and do this all right let's get into it. I have to give a shout out to Black Boy Plant Joy on Instagram because without watching his tutorial, I wouldn't have even known what materials to grab. I didn't use a PVC pipe, but I pretty much used just about everything else that he had in his tutorial. Y'all should go check him out on Insta, by the way. I'm using a combination of a bamboo stake and a random <laughs> orchid stem. I mean, hey, it has extra nutrients and over time it'll make my plants look beautiful, which it's actually already doing. I should show you guys an update of this plant. And as you can see here, I'm just wrapping around that thread, which is going to wick up the water as you water your plant and stake. I tried to make sure I evenly wound it down the vertical length of the pole, so that way it's not gonna have more moisture in one part than the other. And once I'm done with that, just tied off the ends, I'm taking my sphagnum moss, making sure I rehydrate it first before adding it to my netting wire. I didn't wanna look for it at the store, so I ordered mine from Amazon. I don't know how many inches I cut here, but you can kind of gauge based on how big or long your pole is gonna be and I'm packing even more sphagnum moss as tightly as possible because this stuff is going to like get really messy if I could do this all over again I would have had like a tarp or newspaper down so that I could easily like clean up because as you can see it just got everywhere but it's fine that's why we have vacuums Anyways, I'm using zip ties to secure and tighten up all of the material that's going to bind the stake together and prevent it from being loose over time. Uh, the more you use, the better, honestly. Don't, don't be stingy with how many zip ties you use. And once you're done, obviously cut them off because we don't need that extra nonsense going on there. The next part is staking it into your plant pot. Yeah, your plant will definitely topple over if it's anything like my small little pot is. So over time, you do want to upgrade your pot size so that it doesn't happen as frequently, but we ain't got time for that. We just trying to do this tutorial for y'all. Yeah, make sure it's nice and secure to the plant stem and you're all good. The next DIY is going to be my cocoa fiber stake. This is the same type of liner you would see in like hanging baskets at Walmart or wherever you guys shop for plants in garden centers. It is thick and it holds itself together um, in a sheet usually. So that's the type of material I personally use. I would not recommend using like a cocoa peat or something like that because it's literally just gonna fall apart so know the difference um, and actually I will go ahead and leave all the links of everything I used for you guys down in the description because it can be a little confusing and also some places sell these things for a lot honestly I don't understand why it's so expensive everywhere else I've looked but there is a seller I'm gonna share down below um, that's not available on Amazon but they do have a really good deal on their products for cocoa fiber material and that's what I used in today's video they're not sponsoring me at all I just literally wanted to share that's the one that I personally use but you can use whatever you want if you end up maybe just making one of them you might find that it makes more sense just buy a small strip of something on Amazon that you can find of cocoa fiber, but I didn't know how much I was gonna need and I ended up getting a little bit more than I needed, but I think over time I might end up using a lot of this because at least I just have it available and I don't have to pay any extra for more. And it's a great thing to have just if you do garden, if you do like plants. For this one, I'm not using an orchid stem. I'm just using two sturdy bamboo stakes and I'm tying each end as I did in the verse part of the video for my sphagnum moss pole so that way they don't keep separating now I'm using my cocoa liner and this was so hard to cut y'all like I had to do it off camera because it was getting so annoying so it took time and it might take you just as much time after I cut it as you can see here I am wrapping that same thread around my pole and I'm making sure as I'm wrapping it to hold the material tightly together because you don't want it to be loose yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
I found an easier way to do this as I'm gonna show you here in just a bit because I was getting really annoyed having to keep underhanding it. And so now, once you just hold it on um, your knee or something like that, you can literally just roll everything. And that's a lot easier than what I was doing in the beginning. So try that out first and go all the way down the bottom and make sure you're still holding everything tightly, squeeze as much as you can. And you should be able to tie off the bottom by wrapping it a few more times and knotting it. Don't forget to leave extra length of the thread so that way it can stick into the potting soil and then with time it'll be wet because like I said earlier, cocoa core is not going to retain moisture. So that's why we're having the thread on the outside versus it being on the inside. And I'm just sticking it in there, making sure my thread is stuck into the potting soil. She looking good. She looking real pretty, okay? Yes, this one was actually a lot more enjoyable for me to make and less messy. But like I said, it took forever to cut the fiber. So have something maybe sharper than I did. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you are a grower yourself and you wanted to try making any of these poles for your lovely plant friends, then go ahead and check my affiliate links down below. It does support this channel to continue pushing out heck of great content that's helpful for people who are also plant enthusiasts like me. I am just a plant enthusiast, guys. I'm not a expert professional. I don't claim to be. And you're welcome to do your own research on these things, guys. I'm just telling you the things that I personally found interesting and feel free to share your opinions respectfully down below if you have any other bits of advice about creating your own moss poles. I think self-watering moss poles are very important, but just keep in mind the more damp your medium is and stays consistent the more likely you might experience some fungal issues, diseases, kind of riddling your plant and you don't want that. So if you don't want to have a self-watering bit, a part of your stake, you just don't have to use the little thread that I use to help keep it wet. Um, but honestly, I don't even think that that'll be too much of an issue. So long as you're not like dousing it every time with water, I think you'll be fine. I think you and your plant will be fine. <laughs> And since you did find some information in this video useful or you just like seeing my face, please subscribe for more content and hit the like button because it does help me out as well. Greater than you know, and guess what? It's free. You don't even have to buy nothing, okay? So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next planty video. I definitely think I'm gonna call y'all growers. It just, it just makes sense. Crystal, growing with crystal, growers. Growing with crystal growers? Comment down below, fight in the comments about it because I personally can never make a decision about anything, but I think growers make sense. I like it, it, it works.